picking up the guitar, composing little licks or progressions like that, and then using them in the intros of my videos. What I just played was the exact intro that I used a couple years ago for a video all about how to understand inverted chords on the guitar. This next example was part of it too. <laughs> That inverted chords guitar lesson is super thorough for how to use inversions in general, but a few people asked for an explanation of what exactly I was doing in the intro progression in those two examples that you just heard. So in this video, I'm gonna break down that exact progression for us. We're gonna do it in two different keys. I'm gonna show it to you with standard open string chords in both keys, and then also with the fancy inversions like the way I just played it. I'll show you notation and tabs on the screen while I'm teaching it, and I'll talk about how this is done with the power of voice leading on the guitar. Composing guitar parts and progressions where every note of a chord is treated as an individual voice and can stand on its own as a melody. If you like composing and arranging on the guitar, or if you just want a deeper understanding of how chord progressions can work all over the fretboard, then I think you'll find this fun and helpful. By the way, I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com where I teach musicianship skills on the guitar so we can express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and follow. I have new videos every week. So voice leading is this practice of treating individual notes of a chord as a note in a melody. So really there's multiple melodies happening at once and when those melodies are stacked on top of each other it happens to make chords. That's kind of how harmony and chords were first realized in music history. We're actually thinking of singers singing individual melodic lines and how do those melodic lines harmonize with, with each other? What kind of harmony does it create? And now we often just think Oh, this is a chord, this is a chord, this is a chord, or on the guitar, this is a chord shape. But voice leading is this um, really puzzle-like, very fun uh, practice of treating each individual note as something so intentional. Where is it going? Is it melodic? Is it singable? And to practice good voice leading, we're often looking for where's the closest note that this note can move to to fit into the next chord, often if we can by step half step, whole step, and that makes it singable. So let's look at how we can take this progression as kind of what we think of as the default chord shapes for this progression, and then how we can think of it with this voice leading approach. So here's the progression I was playing in the key of G with what we think of as the most obvious chords, mostly open string chords. We have G, we have D, which is the five chord. We have G7 going to C, which is the four chord. We have C minor, then D, sus4, D, and then D7, and back to G. Here it is in time. Now here's the three-part voice leading version of that exact same progression. I'll also play it in time, it's at 115 beats per minute, and then after that I will break down what's happening. So here's what's happening and how I'm thinking of this voice leading progression, which in order to do voice leadings, we have to use inversions. And that's why I mentioned inversions at the beginning of the lesson. So this is G major, this is the root, the fifth, and the third, and then the next chord is D. And when I'm thinking in terms of voice leading, thinking of each of these as a voice or as a singer, if a singer was singing each of these, then where's the closest note they could go to to make a complete chord for the chord that we're going to next. So I'm gonna move it to this physical shape, and now we have a first inversion D chord. So this moved down half step. This note got to stay the same, which is excellent voice leading if you get to stay the same for the next chord, and then this top note moved down a whole step. So now that's a complete D chord in first inversion because the third is on the bottom, which means it's first inversion. The next chord is G7, okay? So I'm going to move this note down, the bottom note down, another half step. That's the flat seven of G7. This note's gonna move down a minor third. I'm gonna talk about how to fill those gaps and make even uh, smaller steps in a second. And this top note's gonna move down a whole step. Now we have the flat seven, the three, and the root. It's okay that the five is not in there. That's totally fine. Uh, if needed, if making a dominant seventh chord or, or any type of seventh chord, if we need to get rid of the five, that's okay. I have a video about shell voicings that talks about that, um, and I'll link to that in the description. From G7, this is the third inversion of G7 because the flat seven is on the bottom. We need to get to C major. This is a beautiful voice leading moment here. These two notes are a tritone, and they're just gonna 
each go a half step in opposite direction. This bottom one's gonna go down a half step, the top one is gonna go up a half step. Okay, this top note's gonna stay the same. Ah, beautiful sound, beautiful resolution. That's a first inversion C chord, third, root, and fifth of C major. Now we're going to C minor. All that's gonna happen is I'm gonna reach this bottom note down to B minor. Okay, those other two stay the same because we're C major. Third goes down to C minor. Okay, the next chord is D sus, D sus four. Notice how the bass notes are all moving down by step. It's very cool to have a progression where all of the uh, bass notes on the bottom are moving down chromatically like that. So this last note's gonna move down to D the root. This note's gonna move a minor third down to the fifth of D. And this top note is gonna stay the same. Then we're gonna resolve that top note down to the third of D. Everything else is gonna stay, because now we're just on D. And then I'm just gonna add a voice in here. I'm gonna add in the flat seven. If, you, if it was actually just three singers, then this singer here could go up and sing that and get rid of the five for a second if I wanted to keep it clean. And then I just played a full resolution, kind of full bar chord G. Again, if I wanted to um, make sure that I was sticking to three notes, then what I would do is this would go down to the root. This flat seven of D would go to the third of G and this third of D would move to the root of G and you hear how kind of perfect of a resolution that is. But as a guitarist, I originally just played it like that, strumming that whole chord, which includes all of that voice leading and also just fills it in to make it a little, a little thicker. So one more time through kind of slowly and just reiterating what we got, G major, D major first inversion, G7 with the flat seven on the bottom, third inversion, resolve to C, first inversion, C minor, first inversion, uh, D sus, D, D7, G. Now here comes the coolest part about this lesson. This is very cool and doesn't take any additional knowledge to kind of level up and have it sound and feel and really be kind of much more advanced harmonically and just sound amazing. So once we have that, which we have the straightforward, the actual chords, the voice leading, how do you play, you know, moving those exact chords to every note that is close by, that that takes a lot of work and that's very worthwhile to explore uh, and to be able to work through things like that on the fretboard, however long it takes you. But once you have that, then we can, without having to worry about what the harmony is, connect every voice even closer. You can even connect everything by never moving more than a half step. But we're just gonna connect by at least half step or a whole step with all of those filling in some of the gaps. You can do this anytime for any progression, any voicing. All I'm gonna do is add notes that fill in the bridge between one note to another and we get really amazing sounds, really beautiful voice leading. And really this is kind of how harmony as an idea was invented in the first place, just moving melodies because you wanted the melody to move and the harmony ends up being something different because the melody moved. You'll see what I mean, check this out. So I don't have this planned out or anything. I'm just going to add notes in between movements. I kind of like the first one already. Um, this is moving half step. You can't do anything there. What we could do with this concept is make what happens to be G minor, but I'm just thinking, move that top note, and then we have a half step motion. Now this one, um, we're usually jumping all the way over here, so we can go have a step in between, and then resolve like that, and you can even add more steps. I'm moving this down a half step. That was a very nice sound, and then this shape, and then, go to this G7 that we had. Don't worry about exactly what I'm playing. I'm not identifying everything for you because I don't want it to be sound like it's about that. I want to just say, try adding it, try filling in a note somewhere, filling in a gap where between a whole step, between a minor third, that kind of thing. So we're just adding in a bunch. Okay, that's that G7. Here's that C major. Here's that C minor. Okay, maybe I'll just go. Oh, cool. Very cool. I'm gonna move this down a half step by itself. And then this one down. And now we have that sus. Now here's that D. And we can resolve how we 
were. So I hope you see the idea of what we did there. So if I listed everything and we thought, well, look at the harmony we happened to get. Instead of thinking of the chords first, we just filled in notes and got this crazy harmony that we is just a byproduct of making notes move chromatically. So G major, G minor, D major. This is F sharp minor. This is F sharp diminished. This is the G7 that we had before. This is the C major. This is the C minor. This is B augmented. This is E flat major. This is G minor. Here's that D sus. Here's that D. Here's G. So I don't want to overwhelm you listing all of those things. The point more is just and you can, you know, that's kind of overdoing it just to fill in all those gaps, but you can fill in a couple here and there between any chords any time and get, and you don't even have to know what the harmony is. It just gets a cool uh, result and you can try to analyze it and figure it out if you want to, or just know, I know what this chord was and I know what this chord was and I added something to connect in between and that's the music I'm making. So here's the same progression with the same voice leading in a different key, in the key of D. We're gonna change the tempo a little bit and I'll change the right hand accompaniment style a little bit, but just to study this a little more, let's do it in this other key. So this is almost the exact same progression. In the key of D, we have D and the five chord A, then D7, I'm thinking of that as five of four, so five of the G chord, and I'm making G minor, this is the minor four chord. Okay, then I'm going to A sus, a sus4, and then A, and then back to D. Okay, now I will do it in time. Okay, now here it is in time again with the voice leading style at the same tempo, 105 beats per minute, and this time I'm going to arpeggiate it with the right hand. Okay, let's break that down. It's the same thing as before, but in D, here's the D major chord, same shape as before, root, fifth, and third. Here's A major, third, root, and fifth, first inversion. And then we have D7 with the flat seven in the bass, flat seven, three, and uh, the root on top. Resolve to G, bring this down for G minor. Then we go to A sus, then A, and then I resolve to this D shape. So it's the same progression as before without adding the dominant seventh element in uh, at the end. Let me go through it with that um, actual accompaniment style one more time, very slowly. Now let's do our game with it where we fill in notes, okay? So we could add that we could add that D minor if we like that, or we could go straight to this A chord, and then we could go to this, adding this note in stepwise, or jump straight to this one. You hear it moving in this same way as we've been doing. We could add in this, this moves um, a whole step on the top, so you could add in a step there, make it very dissonant. Okay, we can resolve to G, we can make that G minor, we can do this augmented chord thing, and then the major chord, and then the bringing the bottom note down a half step, and then this note down a half step. Now we have a sus. Okay, it sounds very classical, especially if I do it with that accompaniment uh, arpeggio. with those extra movements in there and kind of can do as many or as few as you want to. Sounds very classical because that's exactly what classical music is doing. It is uh, finding those extra little voice leading spots. And again, harmony was kind of uh, created as a byproduct of doing that with melody. And now we can reverse engineer it and start with the chord progression and then connect them with voice leading and then fill in the gaps, which adds more harmony. Um, and especially if you move things individually, um, like the way that we took this shape here, which happens to be B flat major, and then instead of just going to that next shape of A sus, move that bottom note, and then the middle note, and then the top note, 
all individually as these individual voices gives it more impact uh, harmonically when one note moves to change the harmony instead of multiple notes. That's one of my favorite composition concepts in general and especially applied to the fretboard. And it doesn't take a huge amount of knowledge to start doing that. You can take any chord from any chord that you already know how to play, find out where there's a, ha a whole step or more between two notes that move, and then fill in extra notes and see what, how it sounds to you and see what it creates for you. So I hope you'll have some fun playing around with that. If you want a wealth of chord options to try this with, or just a wealth of chord options to do whatever you want with your songwriting, your theory study, your ear training, Training, you're uh, playing around with learning what chords are in what keys. I have a really, really awesome chord chart called Chords with Color that shows all the chords through five different keys and then a ton of variations of those chords that have extensions like the add nine or the major seven or the major nine or really like every type of extension you can think of. That chord chart and those chord options combined with this stuff we talked about here would be insanely powerful. That chart is totally free. There's a link for it in the top of the description or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color. I hope you'll download that and get some good use out of it. What I recommend watching next is my chord inversions video that the that this whole video uh, came from. The two little introduction compositions that I made just for the intro of that video are what this whole video was about us talking about what's happening there, how I thought of composing it and us analyzing it and breaking down the concepts of the inversions and the voice leading. That's from that chord inversions video. The rest of that video is just about inversions in general and how they're used and so I recommend watching that next there will be a link that pops up right on the screen here if you're watching on YouTube so you can click that and go straight to that video or you can find a link to it in the description I post a new video every single week next week's video is going to be my very first gear review my very first pedal review on this channel hope to see you there thanks so much for watching take care and happy practicing